Hello everyone, you're listening to Scientific Healing with Dr. Anastasia Chopolis. I know the power of vibrational healing by combining physics and ancient healing arts to develop my own system that has helped thousands of my healing clients and students. When you are ready to feel energized at the end of the day after working with your coaching or healing clients all day, and even while expanding your business, Go to scientifichealer.com forward slash energize me or connect with me at scientifichealer.com forward slash appointment. Today, I am very excited and pleased to have Dr. Ted Corin on the show. Dr. Ted trained as a chiropractor, but he's not just about helping you relieve your back pain. He has shown how much the body is a whole unit and adjustments can help change so many things in your body. He's an amazing advocate for natural and integrative medicine and has gone up against big organizations when they tried to dictate his actions and won. And he developed his own process for helping release trauma from the body called the corn specific technique. And that is just about what we're going to talk about today. And because he is a prolific writer, sought after speaker and teaches people all over the world about his trauma release technique. We're also going to talk about a book that he's just releasing on helping you with your cancer. So when I met about Dr. Ted about three years ago, maybe four now, he demonstrated how this worked to me and I could feel the energy flow, like just tapped here and there and everything else in my body shifted. And it dramatically reduced and basically eliminated the migraine headaches that I'd been suffering from for about 20 years. So they've now become a thing of the past. Welcome to the show, Ted. I'm so delighted to have you here today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to see you again. And yes. You. We don't get together often enough. I know. That's really... Uh, work on that, okay? All right. So I'll make a bigger effort to come to more of your things so I can please. see you more. Please. If I'm out there, I'll let you know if you're out on the East Coast, please. Oh, that would be great because, um, you know, I send a lot of people to you because they tell me they've got something and I say, well, I have a faster way of relieving that trauma. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I just say, find somebody who is trained in this and you have a directory for all over the country. Yeah, over 3,000. Not everybody is on that, so if you need someone in a certain area, it's probably best to write to me directly, and I can go through the back channels and see if I uh, like anyone special. Yes. Because, you know, not everybody who t you teach learns as you want them to. Exactly. And that's the, you know, it's, it's teaching is, is the most satisfying and most frustrating career you could probably ever have. <laughs> I know, I've done 40 years of it. You understand it very well. So, um, yeah, so, and uh, like so, so many... So you had a personal story of why, why you even developed this technique. Could you yeah. share that with the audience? Life is personal, isn't it? It is. And uh, yeah, I was in an accident. I had a, a whiplash and a con and concussion. And uh, I, the next day, I realized I couldn't use my hands. Um, I couldn't make a fist. I couldn't open my hands fully. I was in constant severe arm, sh hand, shoulder, neck, head pain. And on top of that, the sciatica that I would get occasionally was now fairly constant. There were days I couldn't walk more than 10 feet at a time. So I was pretty much disabled. I was in really bad shape. And uh, I didn't let people know this until actually recently, but I actually gave up my license to practice because I couldn't use my hands. Yeah, I actually read that. I didn't know that either, and I read that. Yeah, so I was in, pr I was in pretty bad shape, uh, and I traveled all around to everybody I knew uh, over a 10-year period. I saw between 40 and 50 different doctors, uh, mostly many chiropractors doing every technique you could think of. Nothing gave lasting relief. Uh, acupuncture, Chinese medicine, uh, MDs, osteopaths, craniosacral therapy, body workers of all kinds, physical therapy, nothing helped, nothing helped at all. And I was really feeling horrible. In fact, when I was, uh, I was looking at a photograph of some old uncles of mine, and they, uh, they were surrounded by walkers and canes. <laughs> and I thought, oh my Lord, is this going to be me in a few years? Um, I didn't want to have surgery. I didn't want to have 
steroids or live on painkillers. And in total frustration, I started working on myself. I had nowhere else to go. And in five days, I was pretty much all better after 10 years of suffering. My wife had migraines for 12 years, and uh, one slight tap and her migraines disappeared and never came back. And I started looking for the worst patients in the world to work on, who in my experience were chiropractors that nobody could help. So I wanted to get the patients that no one else was able to get better. Otherwise, I thought, what did I discover? Just some other technique? Big deal. There's so many. So I went to seminars. That I, I was always speaking at various seminars. I make an announcement. Anyone's got a chronic problem, you're in pain, you're suffering, you've got a health issue. It doesn't have to be pain. Uh, and, you know, you've been to loads of doctors. No one's been able to give you any real lasting help. See me during the break. And I dismiss them. They go to lunch or whatever. I figured one or two people would stop by. The line went out the door. I thought, oh, my God, what a mess. And there were doctors who said, whispering to me, they'd say, you know, some days I'm in more pain than my patients. And the results were so dramatic. After, and these are the worst of the worst that nobody else can help. The responses were so powerful. They started sending me their wives and their kids. And uh, I I started seeing, um, I reactivated my license after a short time. And people kept saying, when are you teaching this? And eventually I gave one seminar and that turned into a second and that turned into a third. And now I've taught over 3,000 people in the U.S., Canada. Um, I've given seminars in uh, France, England. uh, We're going to be in Berlin Mm -hmm. at the end of August. That'll be fun. I've been to Israel. Uh, teaching that about a year ago that was wonderful Australia and uh, Taiwan of all places and uh, we'll be doing more it's, but uh, and we're going to be doing an on we have an online course now so people can learn this work as a home study mm-hmm. and then 16 hours of video so they don't have to travel plus they get the manual and we also have them get a, a private mentor but I'm, I'm sort of jumping ahead yeah, you're jumping ahead, but you know, this is something that is born first out of, you know, absolute need to help yourself and then moving into, oh, well, you know, anybody feeling pain, let's see if it works on other people. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had that experience myself where, you know, no matter what kind of healing that I did, you know, I could get relief from these headaches and um, they but it would get so severe and I'm so anti medication. And the only thing I could take was two Tylenol and go to sleep. And, you know, the sleep would be fitful. And then about halfway through the sleep, I could feel my brain finally, you know, all the the tension around my head relax. And when you, um, when you did that, that stuff, they, you know, tapping me here and there with your little device I could feel something just release and whoosh out of my body and it really completely relieved those headaches. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, uh, the responses have been absolutely amazing. We now teach lay people. You don't have to be a doctor or, 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 and even even a healer to learn it. We've had people come and learn our work and just, just to use on their families. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at one seminar. I remember a guy who must have been in his seventies, and he was incredible. Everyone was practicing. Wow, was he good! And I came up to him. I said, "I don't, I don't recognize you. You must have been to a few seminars. You're, you're really moving along so well, and you know the work." He says, "No, no, I just did the home study." I said, "Well, you must have a very large practice because I'm sure you, you know, you must have been practicing on a lot of people." He said, "Oh no, no, just me and my wife and our grandchildren." I, I, we just wanted to, uh, I wanted to learn how to work on that, help people and heal them. And that's, I was just blown away by that. Yeah, and, I, I run across that a lot, actually, where people yeah. just want to learn it just for themselves and their families. Well, licensing laws are designed not to protect the public, but to protect the practitioners and to protect the state associations. The licensing laws are actually a barrier to true healing. And we're all healers, and I've always mm-hmm. felt that way, and that's why I'll let anybody come to the seminars. Mm-hmm. And uh, depending on what the jurisdiction is in your area, 
you may be able to practice fine. You know, there's, I think, 10 or 11 states in America. This is one know, of them. Mm -hmm. And yours is one of them. Yeah, uh, state, it's State Bill 577. Congratulations. I, I love mm -hmm. it. Uh, may it continue. And I hope it spreads to every state that non-licensed practitioners have protection. Yeah. This is so that's, I, I have that, um, I have a disclaimer on my website that just talks about why I have the ability to do what I do. Mm -hmm. Because um, for alternative and holistic healing, so that would fit in that. And we are protected here. Excellent. May mm -hmm. it continue mm -hmm. and may it flourish. And yes, exactly. So, so uh, I started teaching and, uh, you know, it wasn't just migraines or headaches. We discovered that something really neat. If you put a person in the posture of stress, we call the posture of subluxation, posture of stress, posture of pain, what have you, posture of dysfunction, you will find areas of stress or dysfunction that were not revealed otherwise. So in other words, you can lay a person down on a table and work on them, but if they were in a car accident, if they were sitting holding an imaginary steering wheel, it would reveal damage that when they were laying face down was not revealed. You get a better healing, a better correction, a better release of stress and pain and damage when they are in the posture that the problem was caused in. So we oh. found a fascinating application of this with dyslexia. And we have had dyslexics, kids and adults, get better in one session. And parents are blown away, and I'm creating a uh, dyslexia package for the general public because it works. We've had people who have been dyslexic their whole lives. Within a few minutes, they can read again. Or there's a few forms of dyslexia. There's writing dyslexia called dysgraphia. There's right, and there's dyslexia. also math, math yeah, and yeah, time. Mm -hmm. I know a lot about it because my daughter um, grew up with, she's still a dyslexic, but she had what they call eurythmic therapy where you work with a body. Mm -hmm. And it relieved a lot of it. She went from like 65 spelling mistakes in a page to like three. And That's a hell of an improvement. Yeah, so... so, so Putting yeah. a person in the posture of, of injury, um, and you can use that concept with allergies. You know, I mean, a person could be completely clear, no stress, give them a book to read if they're dyslexic, they lock up. That's what you work on. If they have allergies, you give them an allergen to hold or to smell or even to look at, and they'll lock up. You work on that to release the allergies. If they have a painful memory, as they're thinking of that memory, you work on them to release the stress of the painful memory. And a, powerful healing it releases a lot of energy for true healing. So we've been doing that a lot lately, and it's, it has so many applications. Uh, we have I've built on a lot of really cool systems, some chiropractic ones, stuff from Chinese medicine, dentistry especially. Uh, that's where the cancer stuff came from, my understanding with dentistry, among other things. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. and, um, apply corn specific technique KST to lots of ways, but mostly what I, I think initially at least you can get yourself better. You can work on yourself, and how much is that worth to be able to get keep your yourself as well as your family uh, healthy for the rest of your life? You could use it to get information on nutrition. You can get new information on other stresses that might be screwing up your health. Because what we're really doing, and physicists have actually told me this term, I don't know if you've ever used it, is we're tapping into the information field. Have you mm -hmm. used that? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's nothing to you. Some people say, wow, that's pretty incredible, but you're, way at, you're, you're there. Uh, and it's a matter of tapping into the information field. We use a very simple, what I call it a binary biofeedback mechanism. Everybody can do it. If you've ever had a gut feeling, you have this ability. And it comes hard, wide, it's... It comes factory installed. Yes, it's factory installed. I call it your your perfect energetic blueprint. You already have it. It's mm -hmm. already there. Mm -hmm. So you can tap into health, the blueprint for health, or you can tap into your illness. Yeah. Right? So if you're telling yourself a story, which is information on your body, like if you just say, if somebody quotes the words i have cancer your body will go oh okay well we'll we'll help you do that but if you I've say felt that a lot of these 
so-called charities, I guess they are charities, which are designed to make kids happy with their disease, are really not doing them any favors. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Because and, they're, they're making them happy with the disease, so they'll want to keep it. Well, yeah. Or well, they're <laughs> identifying with it so much more. Mm -hmm. And that is easy to do. And in some ways, it's comforting. But it's really not healing. Mm -hmm. And in this society, medical doctors have largely become uh, curative rather than curative. And they, they manage your illness. Yes, and they manage your them. symptoms. They don't manage your illness. Yes, well, well put. And uh, my two younger brothers are medical doctors, and I see how frustrating it is. Yeah. They really are not into healing and in health. And if they stray far, too far off the reservation, they can lose their license. They get disciplined. Uh, it's, that's why having non-licensed protection, as you have in your state and many other states and many other countries, is very, very good. You know, there's one country that has the lowest GDP cost of uh, health care in the world, an industrial country, and has no licensing laws at all. You know what that is? England. England, interesting. British common law is that the healing is a private contract between people and the government cannot get in the way of it. And it used to be like that in America. In, eight, in the 1830s, all the licensing laws in America were overturned. Lic all the licensings, licensing acts were overturned and people were, had total freedom to practice without having the government tell you whether you could or could not, just like British common law. And during that period, America's health improved greater than any other country in the world. See, freedom does work. Yes, it, it does, does in this case. Yeah. But, and what's, what's interesting is now we have almost double the health care costs of the next country down. It's mm -hmm. between seven and 8,000 per head, per person, per year. That's health care costs. So my health care cost is near zero. So somebody else. <laughs> 14. <laughs> oh, yeah, my health care cost is my Medicare premiums, pretty much. <laughs> well, and that is, that's tragic. I mean, not that for you. I'm glad that you're having that. But the medical model is, as Emmanuel Traskin, who's a dentist and an MD, once said, the fastest growing failing business in America which is pretty much what's going on. We spend more money and we get less and less. So when I developed this system to work on people, which doesn't involve drugs and which can work incredibly quickly and easily, um, a lot of doctors were blown away. They said, I don't believe it. Yeah, most of them will do that. And it's the same thing with when my clients come and their kidneys are healed and they're mm -hmm. going downhill ready for, you know, ready for... Um, it, needing a transplant or to be on dialysis. And I, I have a 71 year old who I see once a month now for maintenance, but uh, he was supposed to uh, have gone on dialysis or had a kidney transplant. His mother died of the disease, another uncle died of the disease. And here he is at 71 with healthy kidneys. And wow. the doctor goes, I, I don't, I don't understand it. And you know, n many of them go back cancer, you know, subsiding, um, asthma being relieved, all of that, they'll going, I don't understand it. But the thing is that there are a lot of cases like that. It's not just the few that I have, but there are a lot of people that are going back and they say, oh, we must have, we must have done the run the test wrong the first time. <laughs> well, and there's, uh, it used to be believed <clears throat> that cancer remission, spontaneous remissions were rare, but I started doing some research uh, to complete my book. And it turns out that it's not rare at all. It's no, it's common. actually common. I've met in, many, in many there. people in, that have gone into remission and never came out of it. Most people have cancers and they disappear. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, women, what, what was the one study? 1% 1 of all women between the age of 40 and 50 will be diagnosed with breast cancer in a doctor's office, clinically, you know, 1%. But on autopsy, they, they died in car accidents or what have you. They do an autopsy. They find breast cancer in 39% of that women of that age group. The only logical conclusion is that cancers come and go in the majority of people all the time. 
that getting the tumor and keeping it and letting it grow is, is really the aberration. Then uh, there's quite a good chance that many of these people who were diagnosed, had they not gone to their MDs and ignored it, would be all better without drugs, without chemo, without radiation, which is quite fatal and kills a lot of people. Oh, and, yes. I, uh, I've lost clients who, you know, whose doctors insisted they continue with their, their therapies and they, they did not make it. Yeah. yeah. Their, and, uh, ba the basically, doctor, their organs shut down. They, so the, the places where we um, generate, like, you know, everybody says so that our body turns over every seven years. That's not true. The intestines, like every three days, the, the blood cells, every, every couple of days, they'll turn over. Mm -hmm. Right. So, sure. so those are the two places that, that die when you start doing chemo and radiation and her digestive system completely shut down. And yeah, yeah. And uh, that's and why she died. Brain, um, which screws up your mentally, your, your mm -hmm. brain, not healthy. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. And uh, more and more people are turning to natural things. The only thing preventing them is fear. I've spoken to people who are MDs who are, and others that have natural, natural cancer clinics, and they say the one thing that is deciding whether or not a person will get better is the family support. If the family is supportive and they're doing natural things, getting to the cause, rather than just dealing with the symptoms of which the tumor is just a symptom, mm -hmm. then they'll get better. Mm -hmm. But if the family says, oh, what are you going to that crazy doctor for? The person's not an MD or this, this MD is nuts. Go to this person and get the chemo. Like, they will usually not make it. Because chemo has a success rate of about 0 to 1%. Mm -hmm. And that's what the studies show. Um, of course, that's loose data. Uh, I have a feeling if you redid the, the numbers, you'd probably find out that chemo has a success rate, a negative success rate. In other words, it's killing people. But uh, sorry about the phones. My, I should have gone into another room where there's no phones at all. <laughs> okay. But chemo, yeah, chemo has a negative. Uh, there's a good chance that a lot of the people who they say die of cancer die of chemo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, now we, I heard one of my, it was great, one of my patients, I talked to her about the perfect, a great diet to get rid of cancer, which is a ketogenic diet. And her mother, who was in a hospital with the cancer, decided to go from chemo to keto, as she put it. And she's doing much better. Um, well, that's really interesting. I read a study about a study 20 years ago that showed in Italy that the, the number one correlation of people, of women who got cancer compared to those that didn't, the number one correlation was they ate more pasta. No, <laughs> that really it was. <laughs> so, wow. the, right? So, so high carbohydrate diet feeds cancer, and we know that oh, sugar yeah. feeds it. Well, uh, the the whole uh, if you study tumor metabolism, you realize that tumors love carbs. Mm -hmm. They love glucose. They love fructose tremendously, and they like uh, free glutamate as an MSG. Mm -hmm. And they love that stuff. And so do most of your cells. They love glucose, but they can also burn fat. So they can go either way. Tumors, on the other hand, can only burn glucose or, and fructose, etc. So if you cut down dramatically on the carbs, you really starve the tumors. They have nothing to eat. And uh, the body starts going into ketosis, meaning the byproducts of fat metabolism are ketone bodies ketones and they flood the body well ketones are uh, tumors are toxic or the ketones are toxic to tumors so you have a, a double whammy the tumors are getting they're starving and they're getting ketones which are killing them but at the same time uh, a, ke a ketogenic diet is very uh, cleansing it's it's detoxifying partially because all those fats need lots of bile and bile is how we detox. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of bile. Uh, that's why I love it when I'm, I work on someone who's got gallbladder problems and the gallbladder is fine afterwards because it's so important for your body's detox, gallbladder. And, mm -hmm. and the liver, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, liver and the gallbladder both. Those yeah. are, when, I, when I work with healing clients, 
the three the three things that um, well actually it's four but the three main things that uh, end up failing first is adrenal glands because any stress it doesn't matter whether it's emotional physical it doesn't matter mm -hmm. our mental stress uh, the the adrenal glands will get taxed and it's the liver gallbladder and then the thyroid right well, and I'm so uh, glad that uh, you're giving people this information and uh, yeah. oh I, you like the title of my book. That's why I was feeling good about that. Yeah, uh, I did. Cancer is natural, so is the cure. Mm -hmm. It's normal, it's natural to get tumors, but it's also natural for your body to get rid of them when it no longer needs them. And the whole point is, let's have lots, let's have everybody have a spontaneous remission. And the book just came out uh, just a few days ago. And mm -hmm. still, it, it's We'll not, have a link in the show notes so people can get it directly. Well, they can call the office or write to us mm -hmm. um, because right now it's still, you know, we still haven't uh, done more than just print it and uh, not even marketing it yet. We, we will do that soon. Okay. The, the, the healer, the, the, the version for your people uh, will have a discount on it, but it's also, it'll have a one hour DVD of my giving a cancer lecture and a PowerPoint as well as the 200 plus page uh, oversized manual. And, awesome. And it's, it, you know, and the concepts are the same toxicity, which includes MS and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia and Lou Gehrig's, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. These are all part of the same package. It's not like uh, they're that different. We've had, these are new diseases. They weren't around years ago for the most part. It's because we haven't had the toxicity we have today. And a lot of the toxicity is oral. We didn't yeah. have root canals years ago. We didn't have to take out wisdom teeth because we had enough room in our mouths because we had good nutrition. And we didn't have to, we didn't put mercury in our mouths for God's sakes. So if you start looking at where the toxins are coming from, and I get into it in my book, then you'll know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't mm -hmm. know, or you don't know how to look. Um, yeah, the self-toxicity is probably the worst is when you have something like a root canal or, you know, something festering yeah. in your body and not well, taking care of it. Yeah, well, this I, I say there's exogenous toxicity coming from the outside, mm -hmm. you know, which is being near a waste dump or pollution or just mm -hmm. drugs, which is taken from the outside. Or, or eating uh, pesticides and yeah. GMOs and, you know, all, all of those. And pharmaceutical or endogenous toxicity. Uh, which is created by your body. Mm -hmm. And it, hey, you can take uh, antibiotics, which can throw off your body's uh, bi biotone, bioma, so badly, your intestinal flora, that you will be producing poisons like crazy. And that's yeah. why it's so important to have fermented food in your diet, as well as a ketogenic diet, and to not eat crap <laughs> like carbs. <laughs> well it's just like i said you know that the the only correlation they found in italy was um eating eating noodles well if you can locate that for me i'd love a copy of it i think i have i have a reference oh, please, to it please. somewhere because i just sent you uh dr uh dr mortensen's papers on uh, physics uh, explaining the work you do and the work i do in getting uh learning from the information field yeah, and so so that's how that's how mm -hmm. your your KST connects to this, right? Absolutely. Because it's all really, um, you know, we get this information. We all have access to it. This information field, we all have access to it, and it's really interesting. I'll develop something like I've developed uh, a few of my own things just from thinking about it. And I'm going, oh, I wonder if that works energetically, and then try it, and it does. So, yeah. so for example, no one's done this yet, but I have an energetic stem cell release, which is based on stem cell, um, stem cell therapy, where they pull it out of the bone marrow and they clean it up. Like, oh, well, why don't you do it energetically? So I do it, and then the tumors shrink really fast. Wow. Yeah. Oh my! You have to wipe this up. <laughs> Really? So, I, I yeah so I, I I am teaching it so I need to put it in I need to put it in a book like I've got a book going about the science of energy healing but I can't call it that I've because that somebody's written a book called that but I have to call it a little bit more specific but it's it's all about 
um, you know, these, this information that comes through, I'll read something that I do automatically. I do my hands like this to pull my energy back and push the other person's energy towards them so we can become separated. And then I see other healers doing this. I said, what are you doing? And they said, they're doing the same thing. So we all get that information from the same place. And we've never spoken and I've never read about it. Right? Yeah. So well, it's really a spectrum uh, of, of information. So you and I are on the spectrum. Hey, how do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> but we all are. Everybody can learn. We all pick it. If you've had a gut feeling, that's part of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, some people, when they do something artistic, they tune in a little better over time. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of getting comfortable with it. And I tell the doctors that come to my seminars or do the home study, or the lay people as well, uh, or other healers, I'll say, just try it. If you think you got it, you got it. The first time you get your first miracle, you'll get so much more confident. Yes, but that's exactly what I do with my healing students. I just tell them to just go work on anybody. If they say, I have a headache, just say, would you like help with that? I'm, I, I'm taking a healing class and I need to practice. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they story. and they and they get one miracle after another, and they're coming back and they're going, "This is awesome." I said, "How's your confidence now?" And they go through the roof. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. It, it, and I tell people, this is not something you develop; it's something you discover. Yes. This is something you already do. You've done it. One of the biggest compliments I got was from one doctor who, at one of our seminars, practicing, said, "You know." I'm starting to feel like I used to feel, feel when I was a kid. I used to get these feelings. But, you know, as we know, school beats it out of us. Mm -hmm. And so much of our professional training ignores it mm -hmm. and downplays it. And yet that's the heart and soul of what healing is all about. That's I what the so. heart and soul of getting information is. So we are really reviving that and keeping it alive. That's why I was talking to you about Einstein's hidden variables. Resonance is the term physicists like to use. This is really how the ancient shamans picked up. It's, vib it's vibrational healing, vibrational yeah. energy. It's all resonance. And we have to respect it as well as intellectual knowledge, and they work together. But intellect is just a tool. Yep. It is not the master. And so, we should use intellect. So let's tell the listeners where they can find you. Um, Your website. Oh, <laughs> actually, I'm from Brooklyn originally, but uh, we and we do have students uh, all over the world, just like you, mm -hmm. which is great. You know, we're we're going to be in Berlin, and we have people coming from France and Italy and, and Israel and uh, England to uh, as well to our seminar in Berlin at the end of August. But uh, doing it on on the home study, I think, is is just an incredible way to learn. And they can go to corinwellness.com. Corinwellness.com. Oh, Corinwellness.com. And click on Corin Specific Technique. Look at some of my blog articles. I've written a lot about cancer recently and vaccinations, uh, modern healing. There's some humor thrown in. All these really cool experiences from uh, doing this work. I, I think you'll like it. And check it out, too. Let me know what you think. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank We're you. just out of time. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. And I just love the content you delivered. I didn't have to ask any questions because I'd look at the next question and I'd go, oh, he's just answering it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he read my mind. <laughs> Maybe I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening to Scientific Healing and for our wonderful guest, Dr. Ted Corin. You can connect with him at Corin wellness.com yes. let's you and i connect go to scientifichealer.com forward slash energize me to check out my certification program to help you thrive as a healer or coach while building out your practice when you're ready to learn more i invite you into a conversation right now i've reserved time for you on my calendar at scientifichealer.com forward slash appointment this is dr anastasia choplis until next time